Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crack, it's crack, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. In this video, I'm getting back to basics, making a simple but cool little project. I'm making that from a piece of firewood, and to make it more interesting, I'm going to complete the project with nothing but hand tools. I'm making a box and hopefully it will be quite elegant. It's to hold one of my marking knives. It's not for me, but for someone else. And I think making the box by hand makes it a touch more special. I've been itching to do a hand tool project for a while. They're enjoyable and there's hardly any dust or noise. And another reason is to show that you can still make something pretty cool and enjoy the project without having heaps of equipment. I get quite a few comments about the amount of tools and equipment that I have. I've built them up over many years and honestly a few of those machines really aren't the best anyway. The point is if you want to make something there really isn't an excuse. Basic tools can still get the job done and an old hand plane really doesn't cost that much and even if the only saw I had was a hacksaw then I'd use that. Just like preparing pieces on the jointer, I start by flattening the face and then plane an edge 90 degrees to that. Cutting it down to a consistent thickness may seem like a difficult task, but it really isn't. I do keep well to the one side of the marks though, as this is the bit I struggle with the most. That doesn't really matter though, as the further away I am from the line, it just means that there's more planing, which I enjoy anyway, and I find that much easier. By the way, I'm really not sure what the wood is. I'm not the best at IDing wood, but it's been in the firewood pile for about six or seven years, so I'm confident that it's dry. It's going to be a small box, so I'll get the two long side pieces out of this board. They came out just about perfect and weren't difficult at all. Now I'll make the end pieces. I was going to use camphor laurel for a contrast, but I've changed my mind and I'll make the ends the same as the sides. And it would have been much easier if I'd decided to use the same wood as the start as I could have just made the first board a bit longer. Anyway, cutting a new piece was easy enough and more hand tool practice, which I definitely need. While I finish those, I'll let you know about my marking knife, also known as the dart, which I'm pretty excited about. After months of design and revision, you can now get your hands on one, and for the next little bit, if you purchase the dart, not only will you be able to get the marking knife at a special launch price, I've also included 11 of my premium plans as a bonus to say thank you for all the support. So make sure to click the link in the description to check out my Pask Makes marking knife and take advantage of the limited time price and bonuses as they won't be available for long. And as always, thanks for the support. I'll square the one end up on all the pieces and then cut them to length. Now that the four sides are prepared, I can move on to the joints. It's been a while since I've made hand cut dovetails, but that's what I'm going to use. The first thing I'll do is number all the ends so I don't get them mixed up. Dovetails are really fun to make. They're not difficult, but like most things, if you want them perfect, then that does require some practice. A decent and acceptable joint is easily achievable though. If you want to learn more, the best place to do that would be to check out Rob Cosman's channel and watch some of his videos. I start with the tail side of the joint and after marking out, I'll cut down to the baseline. I try and tilt the saw over to just the right angle to keep to my marks. But if I'm off a little, it doesn't actually matter too much as I'll mark the opposite side of the joint directly from this side. 
This is also the reason to number the joints as each one is matched. This is the bit that I find the most difficult and I quite often cut them slightly the wrong angle. But as I said, it doesn't actually matter and it does make them look a little bit more handmade. Next I'll transfer the cuts on the first side of the joint, the tail board, over onto the opposite side which is called the pin board. I marked directly through the first cuts that I made into the end of the pin board with a saw, but first I have to offset the cuts by the width of a saw kerf. To do that I use this block with a milled out recess. You can use the saw itself to position the offset, but it is easy to introduce an error. Now I mark through on the one side of the pins using this old modified flush trim saw which has the same kerf as the first saw that I used. I do this quite a few times as the deeper the mark the easier and more accurate the next step is. Now I offset the tailboard the opposite way by using the guide block the opposite way around with the recess at the top then make the marks for the other side of the pins. Because I made deep marks, the saw easily drops straight into them and all I have to do now is cut straight down to the baseline. If you've ever thought about trying dovetails but have been a bit unsure, then this method is awesome and with little practice you should really get some decent results. So if you're slightly interested, you should give it a try. It's not a bad idea to mark the sections that need cutting away just to avoid any carelessness and to remove the waste I'll use a coping saw or actually this one is a jeweler saw but either will work. I also need to remove the outside of the tails which I'll do with a regular saw. The last thing to do is chisel to the line and that's not too difficult either as the chisel locates into the marking gauge lines and again as I said earlier sharp tools make all these steps easier and more enjoyable. It took about 10 minutes to do each joint from start to finish and I'm not that well practiced at all. I don't reckon that's too bad and much more enjoyable than trying to do the same thing on the table saw, band saw or router. I check over each joint removing any stray bits in the corners then ease the back edges of the tails which are hidden and that will help to fit the joint together. The marking dart has been awesome on this project, don't forget to check it out if you're thinking of grabbing one and take advantage of the limited time offer. They're not the best I've ever done, that's the lack of practice, but they're not too bad at all and definitely good enough. Now they're done, I'll make a top and bottom piece and this time I will use the camphor laurel. I'll quickly show that as it's just the same as when I prepped the other boards. Because these pieces are pretty thin, they're not the easiest to hold down, but using masking tape and CA glue works very well.
even just preparing a board is super satisfying. If I had more time, I would definitely do a lot more of this work. Next, I'll cut a groove on the inside of the box. I could use a molding plane like this. It works great, but the only issue is, is the groove showing on the end. That would be visible on the end of the dovetails. Instead, I'll try and make a stop groove and I'll do that using a router plane. Some of you may remember this router plane that I made in a previous Scrapwood Challenge video a few years ago. All I've done is crudely modified the cutter to suit this job. It's working very well though. I went slow on the first couple of passes, lowering the blade each time, but after that I got pretty much full shavings. That went well, next I'll cut the bottom to fit. Not too bad at all, especially as it was a piece of firewood not too long ago. Next, I'll clean up the joints with a hand plane. I got a couple of bits caught and broke away. The wood is actually quite brittle, but it was easy enough to fix with a spot of CA glue. The finished lid will slide in, but first I need to remove a section of the box at the one end. I was going to cut it freehand, but I don't trust myself, so instead I've got a better plan. Now I can fit the lid, then I can glue the end piece of the box onto it.
I need to remove a little more in the corners. I should have checked that before gluing it together, but I managed by using a marking knife and the cutter out of the router plane. It's still a touch too long, but it's nearly there. While the glue's setting on that, I'll take a shaving off the Usagi block that I made in my last video. I have to admit there were plenty of power tools used to make that, but that was a different video and I couldn't resist adding one of the shavings to the lid of the box, even though it would have been fine with that. Next I'll cut out a foam insert to hold the marker knife and in case anyone was wondering who the box and knife will be for, it'll be for one of my supporters on Patreon. I actually had a second go at cutting the foam off camera and did a better job and this is the new piece. It's just about done, just a quick sand and then I'll finish it with hard wax oil. Even though I don't show it, I gave it two coats and sand in between them. I will give it another coat before I send it out to its new owner. Anyway, I really enjoyed the project. It was a lot of fun. Hopefully it inspires you to have a go in your own workshop, however limited your tools are, and just get out there and have a go. That's what making's all about, and that's why it's fun. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.